Okay, if you're watching this video, you probably already know how to graph sine and cosine graphs given an equation, but what do you do if they're giving you the maximum and the minimum values and you have to come up with the equation? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video here. So I'm gonna go through some equations with you, some formulas, and then I'm gonna show you also how to kind of graph it and work with it more visually. So we're gonna do both, and we're also gonna talk about how to write it as a sine equation and a cosine equation, both. So sinusoidal means basically that, that shape of the graph, which is like an S type shape. So we'll write it both ways. So the first thing I like to do is draw a sketch. So here what we have is a pi comma six and three pi comma negative two. So let's go ahead and graph this. One pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. Uh, so pi six is right about here. Three pi negative two is right about here. And so you can see the graph is looking something like, like that. Now, what I want to point out here is, is that, you know, these graphs repeat, sine and cosine repeat, but from the maximum to the minimum, okay, you see how that's only half of one period. So to go from pi to three pi, that's only half the period. So that's really like a distance of two pi. If we double that, our period is four pi. Okay, so now that's helpful. Uh, now we want to talk about finding the amplitude and the vertical shift. Well, notice that when you talk about the vertical shift, see this midline here lies right on the x-axis, okay? It basically divides the graph in half. Half's above, half's below. So the midline here, let's see, we're going from negative two to six. Let's see, that's a distance of eight. Half of that would be four. One, two, three, four. So you can see I'm just drawing in this dashed or dotted line. This is our midline, and normally that midline we said was at the x-axis. It's been shifted up two, so that means that our k value here is positive two. Now for the amplitude, the amplitude is like the height of these waves, and when you measure that height, it's like being on the beach. It's the distance from the, the midline to the maximum or the midline to the minimum. The amplitude's always positive. If this coefficient here is negative, that means it's being reflected over the x-axis. But here, what we can see when you draw a midline like we just did here, is that amplitude is a distance from the midline. So we could say one, two, three, four. Okay, our amplitude is four. If you wanna use the formula, you just do the max, which is six, minus the minimum, which is negative two. Six minus negative two is like six plus two, that's eight, divided by two is four. So you can see we're getting the same amplitude. With this k value, the vertical shift, you're gonna add the max and the min divided by two. So that'd be six plus negative two is four, divided by two is two. So you can see we're getting the same thing. So if you like the formulas, use the formulas. If you like the graphing way, use the graphing way. Now the only other thing we need to figure out is this h value, which is related to this horizontal shift, this phase shift. And you can see that at the maximum here for cosine, see how this starts right here on the y-axis? But you can see this one's been shifted to the right, pi. So here our h value is gonna equal pi. So let's write the cosine graph first. I find that to be a little bit easier because cosine starts at the maximum, we've got the maximum. So let's write that out. So we've got y equals our amplitude, which is four, cosine. Okay, now we have to find the b value. So the b value is related to this formula here, period equals two pi over b. So we have four pi equals two pi over b. We can cross multiply. So four pi b equals two pi, and if we divide both sides by four pi to get b by itself, you can see that b is coming out to two fourths, which is one half. So this is gonna be one half x minus pi plus two. And that's our cosine equation. Now, what about the sine equation, right, Maria? Well, you can notice that this, the cosine and the sine graph, they're out of phase by a quarter of a period. See how cosine starts here at the maximum? Sine over here, it starts actually at the midline, right? And then it goes up to the maximum. But if you continue the cosine graph, you know, to the left here, by a quarter of a period, okay? Now, see, it looks like the sine graph, right? So the only difference between sine and cosine is a quarter of a period. If we take the cosine graph, shift it left, a quarter of a period, but remember when you shift it left, we're gonna to have to actually add a quarter of a period. So a quarter of 
at the period, which is 4 pi, which is pi. Remember, the one that's grouped with the x here has the opposite effect on the graph. So minus pi is shifting right pi. If this was plus pi, it would shift left pi. So we're going to add pi here to get our sine graph. The amplitude's the same. The period's the same. The vertical shift is the same. But negative pi plus pi is 0, so we just get uh, 4 sine 1 half x plus 2. Now, you might be saying, well, Mario, aren't there other answers? And you're absolutely right, because remember, these graphs, they continue on and on and on forever and ever in, in both directions. So what you can do if you want other equations is you can always add uh, multiples of the period. So for example, if I were to add 4 pi here, I could say x plus 3 pi, everything else would be the same. Or I could subtract 4 pi, I could say x minus 5 pi, and everything else would be the same. So that's just affecting the, the horizontal shift, the phase shift. Now, what about, you might say, what about making the amplitude negative? Well, you could do that, and you could you know, reflect it and work with the negative amplitude, but in this case, I didn't really dive into that. But sometimes that's helpful if, for example, you had a graph that was like, like this, and you can say, well, hmm, looks like a cosine graph that's just been reflected, so I'm just going to maybe figure out the amplitude and then put a negative in front to reflect it over the x-axis. But in this case, we didn't do that uh, example. If you want to see another example to get some more practice with this, follow me over to that video right there, and we'll dive into another example.